So not only are these factors allowing us to be alive, these factors are the only place that allow us to do any ob scientific observation as we know in any other part of the universe. Amazing. Logical analysis. Logic requires some facts to which you put reasoning. And I appeal now to a, an argument which is very old. It's called the Kalam cosmological argument. It was enunciated way back then. Three steps, very simple. Whatever begins has to have a cause. This universe had a beginning. The universe then has to have a cause. It is so simple and yet so profound. I took that and made it into my pan process and decided to take another little factor somewhat similar but here's how it goes. Science also has a philosophy. It's kind of an oxymoron but it does have a philosophy. Science doesn't mean only knowledge. Science doesn't mean only a method of inquiry. It is also a philosophy. And here's the philosophy of science. It's called materialism or naturalism. And that says that all that there is in existence are these four. Matter, energy, time and space. And they are governed by physical laws. There is nothing beyond this. There is nothing supernatural. That is the philosophy of science today. So we take that. Everybody agrees to that. That's their philosophy. That is the claim. If that's the claim, that means all matter, that is all material, that is all matter, energy, space, time, had a beginning. And we call the beginning the Big Bang. Do you know what banged? People think it's a globe? No. It's a point. So small that has no dimensions. Where the entire energy of the universe was locked up. Because matter and energy are interchangeable. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, Matter and energy are interchangeable. Once upon a time there was no matter, there was only energy and energy does not occupy space. So all the energy of the entire universe was locked up in that one bitty little point with no dimensions and that is what exploded. Boom! 125 billion galaxies from there. But it had a beginning. Now the cause of an end product, like this pointer. It is quite unreasonable for me to say that the pointer is the cause of the pointer, right? If I looked at a table, table, wooden table, nobody ever says that the table is the cause of the table. Nobody even ever says that wood is the cause of that table. You could say that the carpenter was the cause of the table. But the moment you say that, the carpenter is distinct from the wood and the table. In other words, the cause of a product is always transcendent or distinct or lies outside of that. Always. And that is the logic that we are using here. So now we go back to all matter. All material then consists of Matter, energy, time and space. Therefore, the cause of energy, matter, time and space cannot be found within energy, matter, time and space. The cause is distinct. It lies outside. In, in other words, it is distinct from it. It has to be then supernatural. There are two factors that come in two characteristics that we see about this cause then. Number one, matter is very complex, very intricate, very precise. And therefore, the cause of that kind of a matter would have to have some kind of intellect to make it so precise. In other words, a giant intellect. And this is what Einstein talked about when he said, when he looked at the universe, he said he was in rapturous amazement at the harmony of natural law which reveals an intelligence of such superiority that compared with it all the systematic thinking and acting of human beings is an utterly insignificant reflection. So it is 
a giant intellect. If you think of the power that there is, energy, how much energy is there in the universe? Huge amount. Then the cause of that energy should be able to supply that energy, supply the energy to those mighty clusters of galaxies there, as well as have a sufficient control of that energy to control the smallest subatomic particle inside an atom. That is the concept we see, because this is an observation, this is not an opinion, it's an observation that matter is very precise and complex, and energy is massive. So, brilliant intellect, awesome power. Could this be God? I'll quickly address just two of the questions. There are a bunch of them. We will do them tomorrow, as many as we can. Number one is, uh, how do we know that Earth is the only place where we can observe a total solar eclipse? Uh, I do not know. I can only state what evidence we have. And in looking out, astronomers tell us that there is no other place where this combination exists. So if they are wrong, well, I don't know. But they tell us that there is no other place where a planet has a moon or a satellite and a star that is at that distance and at those sizes. They could be wrong, but that's what they tell me. Now, the other way to answer that for you, whoever asked, and for all of us, is to say, well, I don't think so. I don't think. And therefore, I would like to propose that there is another place. And then give me the evidence for the other place. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Because if you want to make, like, I would like to state that you can easily poke holes in people's arguments. But it is good as an inquirer to have two propositions. Then you can have four lines of argument. So if you say this is not possibly what it is, then tell me what is. And then we'll look at both. That's the balanced way of looking at it.